Hi class. In this video, I will discuss the lessons uh, on the topics of our uh, world history subject by way of a question and answer method. First topic, the progress of uh, trade. First question, what were the aims of the expeditions launched by uh, Europeans? Europeans, led by Spain and Portugal, launched expeditions with the aims to find new trade routes, to open the minds to the possibility that the world was in fact round, and to discover new lands. What effect did these expeditions have on the European kingdoms? These expeditions paved the way for Europe's colonization of the Americas and Asia, led by Spain and Portugal, thus extending the territories or colonies of the European kingdoms. Next topic, Central and South America. What were the conditions in Central and South America before the arrival of the Europeans? The Central and South America enjoyed an advanced civilization centuries before the first arrival of the Spaniards. Why can it be said that the economic system of the Incans had socialist characteristics? The Incans, one of the earliest settlers or societies of America, developed a strong political structure. Their economy was based on agriculture with uh, socialist elements, uh, meaning that the land and its products were shared equally. Government experts were responsible for choosing the, uh, which crops were to be planted, besides training the uh, peasants in all aspects of agriculture. Next topic, the colonization of the Americas. How did Spain go about its conquest of America? Spain went about its conquest of America gradually by conquering one state at a time. In 1519, the Spanish uh, governor of Cuba sent Hernan Cortez and uh, 550 men to South America for future colonization. In 1521, the Spaniards founded the city of Mexico. Uh, the occupation of Peru in 1535 was led by Francisco Pizarro. By means such as this, Spain colonized Central and South America until by 1570, there were 192 Spanish communities in the continent. After 1570, colonization gave way to consolidation of territories. What effect did Spain's colonization of America have on early American civilizations? During the first decades, the effects of Spain's colonization were truly horrific. In the Caribbean islands, the whole population vanished due to slavery, maltreatment, and disease. In Mexico, the population went down from 25 million in 1519 to 2 million in 1580. In Peru, it went down from 10 million in 1530 to 1.5 million in 1590. Next topic, the uprisings. What was life like for the masses under the European colonizers? Under the European colonizers, the life for the masses was miserable, like animals, because of the oppressive, inhuman treatment of Europeans to them as slaves. How did the slaves react to their oppression? The pent-up anger of the slaves eventually exploded into several uprisings or revolts to be freed from the bondage of slavery. 
What role did the mestizos play in the independence of many South American states? The mestizos played the role of leadership of the independence movement. Next topic, the colonization of Asia. What were the reasons behind Portugal's attempted colonization of India and other Asian regions? The reasons behind Portugal's attempted colonization of India and other Asian regions were to get freely Asia's products and to control the trade of these products. How did the Europeans enforce their control over trade? The Europeans enforced their control over trade by establishing forts in every town in all colonies they occupied and employing military force. Next topic, the decline of feudalism. What was the doctrine of laissez-faire? What were the economic developments which inspired the formulation of this doctrine? The doctrine of laissez-faire or free markets is unrestricted trade or free trade that would re result in increased competition which in turn would result in higher quality goods at lower prices. The formulation of this doctrine was inspired by new inventions like the, the power loom, a, uh, a weaving machine, and the great increase of profits for the capitalist. Who was Adam Smith? What was his opinion of laissez-faire? Adam Smith was a Scottish economist and a moral philosopher as well, who is regarded as the father of economies, economics, father of economics or the father of capitalism. According to Smith, unrestricted or free, uh, free trade or markets would result in increased competition which in turn would result in higher quality goods at lower prices. Next topic, the philosophies of enlightenment. Who was John Locke? How did he define the social contract? John Locke was an English philosopher who authored the book Two Treatises on Civil Government that attempted to answer the questions where did the ruler's power and privileges end? Where did the subject's freedoms and rights begin? According to Locke, all people possessed certain inalienable or basic or inherent rights such as the right to defend their life, freedom, and pr property. The government's right to rule depended on the citizen's agreement to this right. This agreement is the basis of the social contract between the government and the governed. Locke also asserted that should the government violate this contract, the government had, or the people, or the governed, had every right to revolt. Who was Jajak also, what was his theory about the nature of people? Uh, Jajak Huzo was a radical Genevan philosopher who man maintained that people were bo born naturally good, but were corrupted by institutions and enslaved by civilization. Next topic, the American Re Revolution. What were England's policies regarding their colonies in North America? What effect did these policies have on the progress of capitalism? England's policies regarding their colonies in North America are or were as follows. The American colonies were allowed to import products only from England and all trade conducted by the, the, the American colonies were regulated to serve the interests of England. 
what was the uh, American uh, to go back to the first question uh, there's still a question what effect did these policies have on the progress of capitalism these policies hindered or blocked the progress of American capitalist so next question what was the American colonialist reaction to England's imposition how did they succeed in their aims England's imposition fueled the American colonialist yearning to be free from England from 1765 until 1773 the colonialist successfully resisted England's imposition of new taxes on various products the American also refused to import English products for as long as the English government refused to recognize their civil rights. From 1777 onwards, the American troops led by George Washington won a series of victories against the British until the war finally ended in 1783. What was the cause of civil war in 1860? The issue of slavery caused a great division between the southern and northern states of America. The southern states strongly resisted the abolition of slavery since slaves provided the manpower in their plantations. In 1860, Abraham Lincoln, an anti-slavery advocate, was voted president. That same year, the southern states decided to break away from the U.S. or United States. This resulted in a civil war where 700,000 were killed before it finally ended with the southern states' defeat in 1865. Next topic, the French Revolution. What were the reasons behind the French Revolution? The inept or incompetent and backward rule of the aristocracy caused the French Revolution with a background of economic and social changes, one of which was the uh, creation of the new French constitution that emphasizes the declaration of human rights. These changes or developments awoke the spirit of a revolt among the masses. What did the Declaration of Human Rights contain? How do these rights affect us today? In its first section, this declaration stressed the equality, the equality and freedom of all people. Among the basic rights enumerated were the rights to be free from arrest without sufficient cause and freedom of speech and assembly. It also recognized the rights of owners over their property. These rights and freedoms still guide all democratic societies today, and these rights affect us today politically and morally. We have enjoyed a democratic government and social political policies that prioritize the welfare of the people. We have also benefited from these rights with the choice of belief or religion based on our free will and conscience. Who was Napoleon Bonaparte? How did he reverse the gains of the French Revolution? Napoleon Bonaparte was a French statement and military leader. When the French government became dependent on his victorious campaigns against the rebels or insurgents of the government. However, in 1799, Napoleon launched coup d'etat, or the removal of existing government from power, usually through violent means, after which he crowned himself head of state. The gains of the French Revolution the most important of which was the overthrow of absolutist rule, were reversed by Napoleon's ascent to power. He immediately launched a policy of imperialist expansion. At the peak of his triumph, 
almost all of Europe fell into Napoleon's hands. Not content with building a European empire, Napoleon dreamed of becoming emperor of the world.